Hello everyone, welcome back to Upside Down Data. Today I want to give an update about Phantom and what our risk indicator makes of its recent price action. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and follow us on Twitter where we put out regular updates about our risk indicators and more. So if you're returning to the channel, you're quite familiar with the graph I'm showing you here. In brief, I'm showing you the price history of Phantom over time with each day, which is each of these dots here, color coded the output of our risk indicator, the upside downside potential indicator. So five is high risk, negative five is low risk. And the last time we put out a, Phantom, a, a video about Phantom was about right here. And I want to talk a little bit about what's happened with Phantom since and what our UDPI is thinking about it. And then also think a little bit about where Phantom might be setting itself up to go from here. So what you'll see is that coming out of the summer, we had this huge run that Phantom that put in, kind of got into this high risk zone here where it had to cool off, kind of go sideways, correct down for a little bit. And then it was able to put in another leg to the upside before we've hit this correction now. You know, Bitcoin has been correcting uh, fairly heavily and we just had another um, correction again off of the correction yesterday. And that's been kind of dragging down the entire crypto market with it. You know, it's kind of a bit of a risk off period in the market right now. But Bitcoin seems like it might be catching some support. We'll have to see what happens. And that might be setting up the rest of the crypto market for a bit of a bounce for a move to the upside potentially in the near future. And so what does the UDPI think about Phantom and its upside versus downside potential right now? Well, what you'll see is that it's actually looking a lot more bullish on Phantom currently than it was just a few weeks ago when we put out our first video about um, Phantom. And we can see this if we just look at the raw output of the UDPI over time. So here I've just replaced the y-axis with the UDPI output, you know, five high risk, negative five low risk. And you know, where we were, um, the last video was right in this kind of area here. We had just kind of caught this bit of a reversal um, in risk. Risk was creeping back up again. But then we had that, we've had a correction. You know, Phantom has really corrected off where it had been up there, you know, uh, up to, you know, over a 30% correction at, at times. Um, although now we're only at about a 26% correction from when our last video was recorded. But you'll see this, this kind of precipitous drop in risk that as Phantom has been correcting, the UDPI has become, is becoming more and more bullish essentially on Phantom. It's saying that the downside potential is shrinking and the upside potential is getting relative, is larger relative to what that downside potential is. So, you know, we're below zero. That would hint or suggest that the upside potential now outweighs the downside pot potential for Phantom. Now that doesn't mean that Phantom can't keep correcting down. It just means that if it does, it's going to eat up kind of more and more of that remaining downside potential and then leave a lot more upside potential kind of behind that we might be getting to a point where there's more and more favorable risk reward ratio for Phantom in the moment. And so this is, I think, uh, a good sign. You know, we were above one when that video went out. Now we're below zero. That's definitely a better position to be in now for Phantom. And it sets itself up, I think, better that if the market catches a bounce, Phantom might be able to put more move to the upside than it would have been able to put in if it had been up here. You know, it's now got more upside essentially accrued than it might be able to uh, realize should the market bounce and allow Phantom to move back up to the upside. And there are other just kind of more narrative or fundamental reasons why we might be especially bullish potentially on Phantom right now. So one of the kind of themes or narratives in crypto to date has this been this idea of these ecosystem plays. How the market seems to really be valuing ecosystems that aren't Ethereum. You know, Ethereum having very expensive transaction fees right now, a lot of normal people just can't afford to use it. So the market's been looking for alternatives for places where it's cheap to use these alternative networks. And really there's just a, a, a trying to figure out which one of these are gonna rise to the top, which ones are gonna be given the most kind of uh, value by the market. And so Solana was one of the first ones to really make a big move to the upside on the back of its you know cheap transaction um, costs as well as its burgeoning ecosystem, things like DeFi and NFTs, et cetera. And so you can see that Solana is actually, what I'm showing you here is just the ranking of different um, layer one uh, protocols and the different, and the basically the total value locked on these protocols. And I pulled this off of DeFi Llamas. So I'm showing you the top eight here. See the Phantom is sitting here at number seven. And so as I mentioned, you know, Solana was kind of one of those first big ecosystem uh, plays to jump. You know, it had a huge rally in price. 
And then Avalanche, AVAX, just did the same thing, where, pro uh, where you know, probably on the back of its ecosystem, the development and the amount of money that's being locked in its DeFi platforms, Avalanche just went nuts recently. Now, it's been cooling off, and we currently have it as being a pretty high-risk asset currently. But it went nuts. It put in another huge run, even after the big run it put in out of the summer. And so what I'm kind of looking at right now is, could Phantom maybe be the next... AVAX, the next Solana, perhaps. And I think there's some things to look at that are are maybe suggestive of that. Although, of course, this is just speculation. Who knows what's going to actually happen? You know, one thing I think is useful to look at is just the number of protocols that have been um, launched on Phantom. You know, it's got one of the highest levels. You know, only uh, Polygon, um, the Binance Smart Chain, and Ethereum have more DeFi protocols on it, which suggests that Phantom has a lot of development on it which is something that seems to be valued in the market right now. This idea of active development, new dApps being deployed, and things like um, DeFi is a big kind of focus right now. It's also holding up relatively well throughout this correction. So this is just a seven day change. And you'll see that you know only um, AVAX and Binance Smart Chain are in the positives. And so Phantom is actually holding up relatively well. People aren't pulling out a ton of money from its DeFi protocols. That's interesting. And what I also think is, is interesting to note here is of these top eight uh, layer one uh, blockchains, looking at the, the value locked or the market cap divided by the total value locked, you know, Phantom has the lowest uh, ratio here. And essentially what this ratio is getting at is that uh, how high is the market cap of the asset? You know, it's, it's price multiplied by all the coins that are in circulation and then dividing that by the total value that's locked in its DeFi protocols. And this is a kind of a rough measure of kind of uh, value that's being placed on the, the, uh, the, the chain. And the lower the value, the more undervalued you can sometimes think of these layer one protocols as being. That if they have a ton of, if there's a ton of funds locked up in the DeFi uh, protocols that are given uh, layer one like Phantom, but the price is relatively low, and that would suggest that maybe there's more money that's going to come in to kind of rectify that. There's a ton of money locked up, but the price isn't that high. That's kind of unbalanced. That doesn't that doesn't really make sense. And so usually it'll end up being the case that the you can kind of think of this as being kind of a relative way of valuing these layer one protocols. So the lower the market cap to TVL ratio, that's a rough estimate sometimes of thinking if 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 something is under or overvalued. Now, again, with layer one protocols, there's tons of utility for them besides just DeFi. And so looking just at the market cap over total value lock is not necessarily a guaranteed way of assessing its relative value based on uh, or relative to other layer ones. But I do think it's interesting to note that Phantom is the lowest, has the lowest ratio of its market cap divided by total value locked, which might mean that relative to the other um, layer ones in the top eight, it might be the most undervalued from that perspective. Given that just that single metric, it might be the kind of undervalued. And also we know that it's relatively low risk right now as well. And so that might be another, that kind of combination might be really setting it up well, that if it might be kind of undervalued from a DeFi perspective relative to these other layer ones, and we know it's relatively low risk right now, maybe that's really setting it up for a nice move to the upside. Now, this is all just speculation. Who knows what's going to happen? Who knows if Phantom's really going to be the next uh, layer one that gets picked out as being kind of that next AVAX or that next Solana, you know, really getting valued for its ecosystem. But I do think just looking at the numbers right now, it's it doesn't seem like a bad thing to be thinking about. You know, it seems like something to have on your radar potentially. That Phantom seems like it might be sitting at a pretty good spot. We've seen the market put a lot of value in the Phantom in the past and really pump its price. Its market cap currently is only around $5 billion. That's not that large. That's well below what Avalanche is now and certainly Solana, which means that Phantom could have many multiples to put in um, in the future. And who knows, maybe it'll be the next one that really kind of catches fire like some of those other ones before. Now, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. And of course, this is all predicated on Bitcoin really catching its ground, holding the line, not falling any further and, and sending the whole crypto market into a tailspin. But assuming that that doesn't happen, that Bitcoin does hold the line, that you know it has support here, and there's different reasons that to be optimistic for why we think Bitcoin should hold the line. Not good getting that here, but there are reasons that that hopefully will happen. And if it does, Phantom might be setting itself up for a nice move to the upside. Again, not financial advice, speculation, you should form your own opinion, but that's just something that I've been thinking about recently. So to kind of wrap up our, our update, you know, here's where we were um, back on November 4th. You know, risk was above 1, 1.13, and price was at 
$2.77. As you can see, we've corrected about 25-26% from that date or the current price. But look at this change in risk. This is a pretty massive change. We went from 1.13 to negative 0.7, and the risk seems to still be dropping. You know, we haven't found that kind of bottom out point that we sometimes look for to, to kind of mark a, a reversal, potentially. And so this suggests that Phantom is setting itself up nicely, and the risk might even drop a little bit further before it's ready to move, make its next move to the upside. So assuming that Bitcoin catches some support, is able to hold the line here at around 53 you know, 54K and is able to bounce and the whole rest of the market bounces with it. I'm looking at Phantom personally as being one that might be able to perform especially well in that bounce. Now we'll have to see what happens, but I think it's might it's set up pretty nicely potentially. And I think what we can also see when we look at this is that, you know, Phantom is at a pretty good spot relative to some other assets. You know, it's at negative 0.7. There's some that are still above one. But I think what you can really see looking across this is how far risk has kind of fallen across the board with this correction that we've had. You know, before this correction, risks, there were only a few assets that were below zero. Now there's significantly more assets that are below zero. And what this might mean is that if we do catch that balance, if Bitcoin holds the line, if we get that next move up to the upside, we continue on here in the bull market, that the whole crypto space is setting itself up nicely for some nice upside potential realization. You know, we're getting to more favorable risk reward ratios right now. So it's reasonable to expect that these assets might realize some of that kind of accrued upside potential um, coming out of this correction should we catch a bounce. And so that's something that I'm personally going to be watching very closely is what Bitcoin does over the next couple of weeks. And if we do get that bounce, personally, I'm going to be looking very closely at Phantom. I'm going to be watching it closely. And I think it might be setting itself up for a nice move. Now, again, that's all speculation we'll have to see. But it'll be interesting to see once, if and when we catch that bounce, Phantom might surprise some people and might be able to put in some nice work. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on Twitter. And remember, with the UDPI, we're all going to make it.